everybody, it's Day I'm back and today I'm going to be doing a video about the top 5 books coming out in February 2017. So I've done these videos for the past couple of months, really enjoyed doing them, it's really helped me pick which books I want to read the month ahead and I hope you guys are enjoying them too. Do let me know down below if you are or if you aren't and you think it's a waste of time to be doing these. I'd love to know what you guys are thinking. But without further ado, I'm going to get into the books that are coming out in February 2017. So the first one, then, is a book I've talked about a few times on this channel, and that's Ragdoll by Daniel Cole. This is a new thriller by a new author that I don't think has written anything before, and it's about a really interesting, grizzled, kind of a bit off-the-handle, really witty British cop. And basically, one day, they find a body in an apartment made up of five different people, parts from different people. It's a bit grisly. And basically one arm of the body is pointing at this police officer's apartment. And basically it all stems back to things that have gone on in his history. And it's a really interesting crime novel. That It's very personal. Um, but it's also really funny and witty. There's lots of really likeable characters. I did not guess the twist and what had gone on until really quite late on in the book. Like super, super late. Almost just before it was revealed. I had different people suspected the entire way through. And it's just a really interesting, refreshing, different take on a th kind of crime thriller. It's got police procedural elements. It's got thriller elements. It's got really unusual characters. And I think it could be huge in 2017. So full disclosure, the next book is one that I am currently working on at work, but at the same time I do think it is one of the biggest releases of February 2017, and everybody else seems to agree, so I'm going to talk about it here. And that's Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. So Neil Gaiman is basically the big daddy of the fantasy world. Everything he writes is pretty much golden. American God does incredible and is about to come out on... Amazon Prime, I think, as a TV series, everything from Coraline, all the way through. Basically, everything he's done is just off the charts incredible. And this is his take on the traditional Norse myths. So, obviously, the Norse myths, Thor, Loki, Odin, Freya, have all really become quite popular recently thanks to the Marvel films. Thor has kind of got this presence that he's never had before in the mainstream, and I think that this takes those stories back to their initial roots and the original myths that really developed thousands of years ago. And I think with everything that's going on with Marvel, there's a new Thor film this year, they're just so popular. And it's the fact it's Neil Gaiman, which is just ridiculous. It's such a big name and I think it's a great pairing. I think this book could be huge. So the next book is one that I don't think will be huge, but it's a very significant book. I think it's one that a lot of people are excited for and that I'm quite excited for personally. And that's Star Wars Aftermath Empire's End. So the Star Wars Aftermath trilogy is basically a set of books that fills the gap in between episode 6 and the new film episode 7. And it basically tells a story in the middle about how we got from that point to the point that the films are at now. And it's just really interesting to fill in that gaps. I read the first book, I've not read the second two yet, and the first book literally has no lightsabers in it. It's a Star Wars book with no lightsabers, and it was still amazing, and that's what really grabbed me about it. But I think it's been a really interesting trilogy, it's built some great characters up, and I'm really intrigued always am with these things, to see how they tie up the threads from what they've written, to what's actually already been put into the films, and I think it could be really interesting to see how that's done. So the last f fiction release I want to talk about in February is one which is a paperback release, and that's of Zero K by Don Delilo. So this is one that my old manager literally loved Don Delilo and talked about all the time. And I'd never read anything by him, but this is a really interesting subject and really interesting topic. It's essentially about a world where rich people, when they get ill, can pay for their bodies to be cryogenically frozen until the time when there's a medical technology that can heal them of whatever they're suffering from. And it goes into really interesting debates about whether this is right, whether this is not. Basically, there's a billionaire and his wife is about to be cryogenically frozen. Their son completely disagrees and thinks it's horrendous and everyone should live in the moment and deal with what they get dealt. And that this whole being extra careful and precautious really just ruins the life you're living. And it's about the kind of the balance between those two. Should we be able to do these things? If we can do these things, should we be choosing to do them? It's really interesting kind of psychological, almost a bit Margaret Atwood-esque in the approach it's taken. And I think it's one that, in hardback, it's one of those ones that's a bit interesting, but maybe not quite interesting enough and quite powerful enough a name to get people to buy it. But in paperback, I think it's really unusual. I think it could be great. The last one, then, is a non-fiction, because it wouldn't be right if I didn't pick a non-fiction. And that's Time Travel by James Glyke. So James Glyke's the guy who wrote Chaos, which is one of the most kind of the most well-respected and quoted popular science books in a long time. He's also written one called The Information, which is all about information in the digital age. And 
This new one, time travel, is unsurprisingly about time travel. But it's not in the kind of general context you'd think. It's not necessarily about the science of it. It's almost about the culture of time travel. It goes through the d- kind of development of ideas about time travel through literature. It talks about H.G. Wells. It talks about Doctor Who. It talks about kind of how it's evolved in the public consciousness to be this thing. It's in so many films and TV and books and games and everything nowadays. And he basically chronicles that journey from this idea, this germ of an idea, to this thing that actually people have started thinking might be scientifically possible at some point, to this big, basically, cultural phenomenon. It does also cover the science and kind of go through the process of how that's developing and where that's likely to go. But I think what really stands out is this kind of cultural look at time travel. And I think it could be fascinating and really interesting for that, especially by someone with the pedigree of James Gleick. So there they are. They are my top five books of February 2017. This month is a bit different that there aren't the kind of the massive, big, obvious releases that there have been for January and December. But there are these really interesting, unusual books that I think, based on the subject alone, could do really well and be really interesting. What about you guys? Have you read any of the books I've talked about? I know Ragdoll has been quite widely distributed. I've been intrigued to know if you guys have read that. But otherwise, I am intrigued to know if there's anything else coming out of February 2017 that you're super excited about. If so, let me know in the comments down below. Um, give me a like and a subscribe if you've enjoyed it. It's really massively appreciated. We're near 800 subscribers at the point I record this, and that's a really exciting landmark to hit. Really hope I can get there at some point soon, and I really appreciate all of your guys' help in doing that. And other than that, thank you so much for watching my Twitter, Goodreads, as well as down below, so feel free to add me, friend me, whatever you want to, basically, however you want to get in touch with me, you're more than welcome to. And other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with my next video.